Hello everyone, Hyper here. Blizzard finally added the reaping affix to the PTR, so we got a chance to test it. And I took a look at a few dungeons yesterday. Uh, first of all, huge shout out to the people who helped. So I did this with a Pug tank and a Pug healer and then a few DPS from my guild. So we didn't get to test every single combination that I was looking for, but I got a pretty good baseline and idea of how this affix will actually play out in Season 2. So the new seasonal affix reaping which is replacing infested in my opinion is a lot better so in this video i'll go through all of the interactions how it works and how i think it will affect mythic plus overall first of all some baseline information about reaping every time you kill an enemy their soul lingers above their corpse and you'll actually be able to see it there's a visual for it so every single enemy you kill including mobs that don't give hp will trigger a lingering soul when you reach 20% ad count or mob count, all the souls that you killed in that interval, so from 0% to 20%, will become active and they will rush towards you. So this happens at 20%, 40%, 60 80 and at 100% as well. Now, you only have to deal with the mobs in that specific interval. So once you get to 80%, you won't have to deal with four waves of mobs. You only have to deal with the mobs from like 60 to 80 which makes it a lot nicer. From what I saw, there's essentially four types of adds. There's a melee that does nothing special, they just run towards you and melee attack. And these are spawned by tiny adds, uh, like the baby creatures in Atal Dazor. There are melee adds that apply a dot, and this dot functions like uh, the damage on Necrotic. So it does a percent of your HP, it stacks up, but it is dispellable. The third type of adds are melee adds that do an AoE smash and these are typically spawned by killing high HP mobs like mini bosses um, or like Colossus in AD. So getting hit by the smash uh, reduces your max HP for a long time but it is a very well telegraphed ability and you have time to move out of it. So in my opinion overall uh, these adds are not that impactful. Their only downside is that they have a high amount of HP so they might take a while to kill compared to the other reaping souls. The fourth type of add is a ranged add and they just continually cast a single target blast on their target. So this is where things like Moonkin solar beams or mass grips, mass stuns, all of those things are very beneficial. So essentially the souls from the reaping and the dead enemies appear where their corpse was killed. This means that if you get a reaping wave and you've moved miles away throughout the dungeon, so you did like half the dungeon without getting any percent, um, you just killed a few mobs at the beginning, you'll have to wait until those souls actually run all the way to you. So they don't just spawn around where your group is, they actually spawn where the mob was killed. So this kind of has to change up your pull pattern, how you do the entire dungeon, because you want to clump as many adds and get as much percent in a little area as you can because once the reaping wave comes that means that you're easily able to group up everything mass script them or whatever and just nuke them down you don't have to get them kind of staggered because that's what really slows down this affix if you deal with the first set of the reaping souls and then like 30 seconds later you notice that there's still a few running towards you and then you have to finish them off before you can move on I noticed a few cheesy interactions which I'm not sure are going to make it onto live but currently on the PTR the way this works if you kill all of the bosses in the dungeon then finish your mob count you will not get reaping souls so if you are at like 95% you finish the last boss and then you go back and finish off your percent you will not have to deal with the last wave of souls. So this will be kind of interesting because it might change up how you path throughout dungeons. Because before this, you always wanted to get 100% before you reach the last boss. So killing the last boss will trigger the end of the dungeon, in most cases. However, with this interaction, in most dungeons you will actually do the opposite. You will do the last boss and then finish off the percent by backtracking. In some dungeons, this might be a little more difficult than others. If you think of a dungeon like King's Rest, there's not really any mobs around the last boss area, so you have to run all the way to the last boss, kill him, then run all the way back to the bridge uh, just to finish off mobs. And this also relies on you having some sort of skip, so either rogues, or being able to death skip, or invis pots, some sort of thing like that. 
Another thing with Reaping is if you wipe, they will all go back to their bodies, all of the souls, and they will become inactive again. So you'll have to deal with the extra adds that you didn't manage to kill when you wiped on the next wave of Reaping. So again, this presents a possibility for a cheesy strat with either mass invis or kind of dying to the adds on purpose uh, to skip the second to last wave, so the wave at 80%. And then you finish off the bosses and you finish off your mob count. So you've essentially skipped a two waves out of five. Um, and that is quite a bit of damage investment and a pretty big time save. So if you have a reliable way of skipping these reaping ads, um, I didn't get to test how, for example, shadow meld worked with them. If you're able to shadow meld an entire wave, because this, if you're able to do things like invis them and have them reset on purpose, as if you wiped, then you might be able to stack waves together because they're honestly not that difficult to deal with. So if you can do two waves of reaping at a time, you will have a huge time save on your hand. Another thing is that all of the reaping enemies are undead. So paladins benefit from this. I'm not sure what other classes do, but as a DK, you can control some of the adds based on their type. Mini boss level souls cannot be controlled. Um, and I'm pretty sure the DK tank in our group said that the caster mobs couldn't be controlled either, but he did successfully control the melee adds. So as far as how does this impact our strategy going into dungeons, how you pull adds, uh, what adds you actually want to do, because infamously in some dungeons there are adds that you most definitely will avoid while it is beneficial to kill others, this will kind of change that up. Because the, the simple reason that the reaping souls and the adds that will spawn whenever you get the wave, their HP will scale based on the HP of their add that you killed when they were alive. So just to kind of illustrate this, if you kill a tiny dinosaur in AD, it has like 100k HP, and you kill a mini boss that has like 2 million HP or 3 million HP, the HP of the Reaping Soul will actually correlate and scale with the HP of the mob when it was alive. So this means that in most situations, you will either want to have one or two higher adds uh, or higher health adds in there, but for the most part, you want to stick to lower HP adds. This is because you can AoE down a lot of lower HP adds way easier than you can kill a few high HP ones. And having one or two higher HP ones is not the end of the world because it gives you something to cleave off of. This affix kind of changes how you path through dungeons. First of all, it will definitely encourage you to gain as much percent in portions of the dungeon um, that are kind of close. So if you think of like the first area in Freehold, there's a bunch of mobs there. So if you can get a bunch of percent there and maybe trigger even two reaping waves there, you will be able to kind of deal with them very quickly because they're close together. But if you're just past 20% and the first area, kill a few ads, maybe get to 30, then you cross the bridge and then finish off it, finish it off to 40. Then you'll have to kill the ads that are past the bridge and you have to wait for the reaping souls all the way from the other side of the bridge to come to you. So this kind of changes how you move throughout the dungeon. You also have to keep in mind when or what percent you're at. So this will greatly incentivize you looking, keeping an eye on the percent, you know, having an exact idea of the percent you need, how each group gives you percent, because you don't want to run into the situation where you're fighting a difficult mob, perhaps a mini boss, and you trigger a reaping wave by mistake. So for example, you pull two or three adds into a mini boss, and then you get a reaping wave. That's going to be very difficult to deal with because there's just going to be a lot going on. So kind of want to plan where you trigger, trigger these reaping events and um, what enemies there are and how you can deal with them. So a great example that would come to mind is in King's Rest, there's that gauntlet event. Now if you trigger reaping in that gauntlet event and the next wave spawns, you will have a pretty hard time to deal with everything. But if you perhaps uh, triggered the reaping just before or just after the gauntlet, you will most likely have a much, much easier time dealing with all the mobs. So this affix from what I saw greatly caters towards blood decays in particular. And this is for two particular reasons. First of all, blood decay can pre-AMS the dot that the melee attackers do. 
even though it is dispellable when you're dealing with a high number of adds, if you're in like a Shrine of the Storm and you killed all the droplets, all of those will have Reaping Souls. So if you're able to pre-AMS and mitigate the, a huge number of stacks of the dot, they will be very beneficial. Second thing is mass grip. So these waves will just run in, the casters will typically stop just out of melee range, and just mass gripping everything and then dropping a slowing death and decay on top of them and just kind of kiting a little bit out of range, it is a very very good way of dealing with all of these adds. So DKs in particular have a great toolkit that is able to deal with reaping. One thing that I did forget to mention about the adds that do the frontal smash that reduces HP, whenever they die, they send out a wave of swirlies and they're telegraphed very well so you can move out of them. But if you do get hit, they reduce the amount of damage you do and the amount of healing you do. And it lasts for quite a while and it is non-dispellable. So one thing that I'm still not entirely certain about is how these reaping souls will interact with certain affixes. Because obviously on PTR we didn't have time to do 10 mythic plus dungeons, we just kind of did two, um, just to take a look at how it interacts with the environment, how we can interact with the souls, how everything works. But things like um, Sanguine, which we were testing it with, did not interact with the reaping souls. So this raises a question, do they spawn explosive orbs, uh, do they cause bursting when they die, so all of these affixes which scale and you might get more or less based on the number of enemies you're fighting i'm curious to see how they will end up interacting with them or another thing is like necrotic are they going to be applying necrotic stacks so these are all things to consider and depending on how this ends up working this affix might be either a very fun affix or on some of those affix combinations it might actually end up being a little more difficult to deal with so what are my overall impressions of reaping after Infested, Reaping is a very, very refreshing affix. Um, I like it in the sense that it is a very simple affix to deal with. There are ways to cheese it. There's ways to strategically pull so you have to deal with less waves. There's ways to in strategically pull so you have easier waves versus more difficult waves to deal with. At the end of the day, this affix is essentially a pad fest. And whenever you get a Reaping wave, everyone will do huge amounts of damage. Then at the end of the dungeon, you look at your overall damage and you did something absolutely insane. So that's kind of fun. DPS and people like seeing big numbers. We like big AoE. Um, this was a thing in Legion that I really missed going into BFA. Those huge pools where you just had 10 to 20 mobs um, or even more that you were just able to nuke AoE down. And just the satisfaction you got from seeing those huge numbers on the meters. But overall, the fix itself is not particularly difficult to deal with. It's not like infested, so I think it will be way more pug friendly. On the beta, we did plus 14 dungeons, which are already scaled up. So the difficulty, I think, went up about 3 to 4 levels. So if you're doing a plus 10 on live, a doing a plus 10 next patch in Season 2 will be about a, the equivalent of a 13 to 14 right now, from my experience. So the difficulty didn't increase a huge amount, but it definitely did increase. The last thing that was kind of added in Season 2 um, that I actually didn't get to test because we tested both the dungeons that we did. So apparently when you deplete a key, so as soon as the timer runs out, Juan Sandi, who will always be a, um, interactable at the beginning of dungeons, if you run back to the beginning and interact with him, you will actually get a 20% HP and damage buff just to help you finish off that dungeon. So this is for people who usually struggle to complete their weekly cap. Maybe if you're doing it on lower geared characters and you know you're going to deplete anyway, um, you just kind of go through it as best as you can. And then once you've depleted, you just get that 20% HP and damage buff. And that just helps you off uh, to finish maybe those last few bosses that might be a little more difficult or just make the rest of your run easier. So this was the new affix for Season 2 Battle for Azeroth Mythic Plus. Um, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about it, especially after Infested, which was so pug unfriendly and it just had a way of rolling out of control and you just get a bunch of infested mobs all around, all the bugs with it of it going through walls, going through floors. It's really nice to see an affix that is very simple in its nature, 
but it is inherently fun to do because it is just massive AoE. So again, if you have any thoughts on this, please leave it in the comment section below, or if you have any questions, you can do the same there. If you like the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. And if you'd just like to chat with me, make sure to join my Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.